This is a production of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. His faith helps him to go through all the trials and temptations of trying to resurrect a place that has been closed for over 20 years. He didn't publish a book. He didn't write an epistle. Word of Christ is Christ indeed working. It's more important to be a loving, caring Christian than it is to be a Lutheran or Episcopalian or a, or a, a Presbyterian. Hello and welcome to the winter 1997 edition of Mosaic, the video magazine of the ELCA. I'm John Bachman. And I'm Wyvetta Bullock. Thanks for watching. We have three stories for you this issue. Plus a bonus segment that recaps last summer's ELCA Churchwide Assembly in Philadelphia. Our first story looks at global mission. Lutherans in North America have a long tradition of global mission service. Through missionaries, the gospel was preached and the sacraments administered in places such as Africa, Asia, Latin America, and the island nation of Papua New Guinea. Cultures once new to the gospel now have thriving national churches with third and fourth generation Christians. And that means that the way we in the ELCA do global mission is changing. In an effort to tap into the richness of the global church, the ELCA now participates in a new program with companion churches. Known as the South-South Ministry Program, talented women and men from developing countries are being invited to serve in other developing countries by companion churches. Pastors from Brazil are working in Mozambique. Tanzania has a seminary professor from India, and Cameroon has a doctor from Madagascar. South-South ministries are also important for the Pacific Island nation of Papua New Guinea. At the Yagam Hospital in rural Papua New Guinea, prayer is an important part of the daily healing routine, even in the operating room. Every time we're doing things here, we have to pray. We, we have to ask God to be with us during this operation. I'm nothing. I treat but God heals. That's my, my motive. Dr. Mami Rani Vasone is a Lutheran missionary. Unlike medical missionaries in Papua New Guinea who came before him, Dr. Mami doesn't come from the United States or Europe. Dr. Mami is from Madagascar. In the southern hemisphere, in the society of Papua New Guinea or Madagascar, we always give respect to old men a big man in a village. And if you want to do something, you have to go across this uh, big leader. Okay. Oh, Mary. Mary. Mary, yeah? Yes. You have to talk to them, explain to them, and then you will gain whatever you want. If you miss these people, and then you... Basically, what are you doing here? They start asking and asking. And and which is a direct way for a Western way to do something. He's a spiritual man and he encourages devotions and everybody should attend the Sunday services and prayer meetings. So this is good. With Papua New Guinea, I know that he's working well because he, uh, he, he seems to understand and he works well with us. In the southern hemisphere, there are very link uh, on cultural habit. People are not, I'll give you an example, people are not direct. They always spit around the bush before. They want to gain your trust before they tell you something. They never come and say, I have this problem. 
they come and make you happy and talk to you and when you are happy they come I, I come for this can you help me it is good that dr mommy loves the people in rural papua new guinea and that they love him it's very a big work in this place as a hundred bed hospital i'm the only doctor here I'm on call 24 hours basis. So it's a big work here. In the 1960s and 70s, Yagam was a thriving full service hospital. When Papua New Guinea gained independence from Australia, health officials chose to offer care through large urban hospitals. At the time, the idea seemed like a sound one. Soon, rural facilities began to close. Yagam was reduced to a small clinic and finally closed completely until Dr. Mami arrived from Madagascar. Don Kudan serves as a liaison between the church and the Papua New Guinean government's medical services. Dr. Mami is seen as one of us because he's black and he doesn't uh, go quick. He talks slowly, he do things slowly, and that's the point. People like to be listened to, to be heard that they want to know that you are listening and you are getting the message. That's the point. It's not just you go bang, bang, and then people start to think, hey, what's going on in the head of this man? What is important is we want someone who listens instead of talking too much. I think uh, Dr. Mami comes from the similar background as we are here, from a third world country. He grew up in a situation where he has to make ends meet. And I think he's got that experience. And when he comes here to Yagong, we just said, we have a big building up there and we want to uh, bring back the service, but we don't know what to do. Can you go up and see what to do? And he comes and he looks at things and then he says, okay, I want this, I want that. And we look around, find things, and we try to make up things to make this hospital work. Without Dr. Mami, I think this would not eventuate. Nothing will happen here. We would have these big buildings here. We still have our own staff here, but we need a medical person, a doctor, be part of the overall staff in this institution. People in uh, Papua New Guinea won't tell a big difference from uh, Africa and uh, Papua New Guinea. He works well with us here. He makes people smile and they like him. And with that, he's a good doctor. I think good doctor be a Christian or you put it the other way, good Christian be a doctor. This is, um, I think this is uh, very important because those of us who are working in the healing ministry, I think we are uh, following the samples of uh, Christ Jesus himself. I think faith makes a big difference in the service that uh, he provides here. His faith helps him to go through all the trials and temptations of trying to resurrect a place that has been closed for over 20 years. Because doc, Dr. Mami comes from Madagascar, he has a smaller gap in the culture. He understands our culture a little bit more than the Western doctors. I place a lot of confidence in Dr. Mami. The idea of soft, soft mission comes from the Americans. And uh, the American is supporting us, bring us from uh, Madagascar to Papua New Guinea. Once in Papua New Guinea, we are taken care by the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Papua New Guinea. Being a soft self is to be equal as your colleague here, not to be above of a national uh, doctor. So I'm living like a Papua New Guinean, so I get salaries like a Papua New Guinean doctor. As it is a church uh, hospital, every morning we start with devotion. To me, it's not a waste of time. We have to come together as one family, one spirit, and then sing this uh, song and praying and listen to the word of God, and then we go out to do the service. I have to put my works and my life in God's hand, and I have to pray every day to have this power to do this work and this ministry. So prayer is really a part of Christian life. I The South-South Ministries program is only one way the ELCA is building companion relationships with Christians around the world. If you want to experience Global Mission yourself, plan to attend this summer's ELCA Global Mission events. The theme is Communicate Hope. The dates are July 9 through 12 at the University of Wisconsin-La Crosse in La Crosse, Wisconsin, 
July 16 through 19 at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in Troy, New York, July 23rd through the 26th at San Jose State University in San Jose, California, and October 30 through November 1 in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Just call the ELCA at 800-638-3522. Ecumenism was the topic that dominated the 1997 ELCA